If they were able to just magically appear in your studio and sit down in front of your speakers and make a couple tweaks and then you listen and say, oh, cool, I like how you did that. Wow, okay, weird, you're using that plugin. When you're actually in a collaborative environment, you don't get when you're teaching yourself by yourself. You know, the whole self-taught revolution that we're seeing right now with YouTube and blog posts and all that stuff, it's the best thing ever, but it has its limitations. Welcome to Recording Studio Rockstars. I'm Lid Shaw, and this is the podcast created to help you become a rock star of the recording studio. This episode is sponsored by Sonarworks, helping you get the most out of your mixes by correcting the sound of the speakers and headphones in your studio so you get your mix right the first time. Are you sick of doing multiple mixes and still you can't get the low end right? How would it feel to have badass bass the first time? Get a 21 day free trial at sonarworks.com. Are you ready to rock the perfect mix? This episode is sponsored by OWC. Other World Computing, which you can find at OWC.com, your trusted source for memory and speed upgrades, DIY installs, and use Macs for your studio. Let OWC focus on keeping your studio Mac in killer condition so that you can focus on making great music. Why ditch your existing Mac when you can take your studio far into the future with OWC? Learn more at OWC.com and learn how you can supercharge your studio Mac. The speed to create, the capacity to dream. Find out how awesome your Mac can be at OWC. Hey, rock stars! It's your host Lid Shaw, and welcome to Recording Studio Rock Stars, bringing you into the studio to learn from recording professionals, so that you can make your best record ever and be a rock star of the studio yourself. My guest today is Chris Graham, a multi-genre Billboard chart-breaking mastering engineer who's worked with thousands of artists in his career. He's also the co-host of Six Figure Home Studio Podcast with Brian Hood. Their podcast aims to help audio engineers make a full-time living from the comforts of their home studio. Chris has a passion for seeing audio engineers make a solid living from their skills, and he thinks there's nothing cooler than when people, quote, fire their boss so that they can go full-time in music. Chris has also been on the podcast a couple of times already, which you can check out on episode 72, where we talked all about uh, Chris Graham mastering and how to grow an online mastering business, and episode 118, where he came to my uh, defense (laughs) in fighting the home studio battle here in Nashville, which is an awesome one. (laughs) Thanks for doing that, Chris. I got overly fiery on that one. Dude, you're awesome. (laughs) So, um, Rockstars, if you want to learn more about um, Chris's mastering business, Chris Graham Mastering, check out, again, episode 72. But today, we're going to focus on his newest uh, brainchild and passion and website, homestudiolessons.com, where you can book one-on-one lessons with a professional audio engineer and get face-to-face teaching directly from the comfort of your own home studio, where it really counts. So, Mm. please welcome Chris Graham back to Recording Studio Rockstars Chris, my man, are you ready to rock, 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 rock? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Dude, I I am so glad to be here, um, partially to record the podcast, but mostly just to hang out with you, man. I, I know, miss you. Dude. We haven't been hanging out enough, man. We need to hang it's out true. more. It's Wait, am I, true. off the top of my head, I'm remembering that you're also a, uh, um, a disc golf fan. I am. I have not had much time to disc golf this mm-hmm. past year. But me, me neither. I, it's probably been a decade for me. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun hobby. I, I highly recommend it because you get a lot of you get your steps in for sure. Yes, indeed. Um, well, we'll have to play that sometime when you come back down to Nashville or if I come up to Ohio. Oh yes. Um, oh yes. L- dude, give us another like give us the condensed brief introduction to who you are again. So the rock stars, if they haven't already heard your previous episodes, tell us just a little you know briefly where you are, what you do. Yeah, so my story uh, starts as a musician, like most of us audio engineers. And I was like the singer-songwriter guy. I had an acoustic guitar and a bunch of pedals, and I would tour and, you know, loop and, you know, play songs for people. And that went really well for me. Um, So in my, you know, early 20s, I would go and, you know, sell a couple thousand records a year when people would still buy your record at full price if they liked one of your songs. 
And uh, so it was a great living. Um, but what I did was I sunk all that money back into gear and I started producing and mixing and primarily worked with other singer songwriters. Um, from there, I, you know, had to get into mastering when, you know, occasionally a client would run out of budget and they'll be like, yeah, we're just going to release it unmastered. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, paired up with another mastering engineer in town, got him to show me a thing or two and started mastering. Um, there was one pro project in particular that I had to sort of dive in and, and master myself, which was the most terrifying, scary experience ever. And, uh, it turned out I was good at it. And I started, uh, mastering records for friends. And then from there, um, I had a mentor, a, a friend of mine that said, Hey man, you're good at this. You could do it for a living. And I was like, yeah, right. No way. Uh, and a few years later had an idea for the, my website, which is this kind of cool before after player. So you select a, a yeah. type of a genre of music and then you can hear unmastered and mastered and switch back and forth in real time. I launched that and, you know, got heavy into learning how to market myself and uh, accidentally created a pretty decent little business. Um, so I, that's what I do full time. Um, master, I don't know, at least a record a day. Awesome. And I've been doing that for a number of years. So it's uh, it's great living. I, I like it. But for me, this sort of uh, this current brainchild, Home Studio Lessons, came down to um, something that we started doing with Chris Graham Mastering a few years back. And that was doing a, a mixing consultation before mastering. Uh, without a doubt, the most common request I would get from people was like, hey, I'm going to book a project with you, but could you listen to my mixes first and tell me to, if I should change anything? And like people would ask that question again and again and again and again. So finally, we started doing that as part of the mastering service. We include a free mixing consultation. But the big idea there was what's the best way we could help people with that sort of one-on-one -on -one with the real feedback thing. Right. And the story from Studio Lessons, you know, I'll be sort of brief with this, was that about a year ago, I decided to start taking guitar lessons. And this was weird because I had been playing for like 25 years and it used to be my job to play guitar. So yeah. I'm, okay, I'm okay at it. You know, I'm, I'm competent. But I went and I met with this guy and he was like a finger style guitar player. And what was amazing about it was because I was self-taught, there were all these gaps in my knowledge of how to play the guitar. And I sat down with him and I'm like, hey, you know, this is a song I'm working on or hey, this is a song I wrote. And he would say, oh, have you thought about um, playing that chord in second position or, you know, something like that? And or, hey, what if you played it like this? And, you know, brain would explode. And then I'd inevitably have like a question to follow up with that insight he just offered. He'd answer the question. I'd ask another question. I, you know, he'd answer that question. I'd ask another question. And we'd go around and around and around doing I'm going to talk about this more later, doing what I would call the Q&A loop, which is something right. magical that happens when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody when you're getting a lesson, is that you are diving deep in a way that you can't in any other way because it just takes too long to ask a question, get an answer, ask another question right. when it's not face-to-face. -face. Well, it's like tech support emails. It's like that. Oh, that, yeah. That's the, it requires incredible patience to wait for an answer for something. You know? Totally. So – as the story goes here for homestudiolessons.com, my, my oldest son started messing around with GarageBand. And to watch, he's, he's eight years old, and to watch him mess with GarageBand and just like look at him like uh, wishing that when I was eight years old, I had GarageBand, that it was oh, a no thing. No doubt, man. Oh, geez. So like just watching him like make, like he likes to make electronic spooky dance music and watching him make it, it was like, oh my gosh, I wish... I wish I could get him lessons, just like my guitar lessons, but like with him and, you know, his computer. And that just sort of hit me like, oh my gosh, that, that would be awesome. And that's what every single person that's ever asked me for mixed feedback has really wanted. They've wanted a one-on-one -on -one video chat with screen sharing so that yeah. I can give them real-time feedback and they can ask questions. So it just sort of hit me like a ton of bricks of like, well, what would you call this? You call it a home studio lesson, you know? Right, right. You're, your studio is an instrument. Not, not only is it an instrument, it's the most powerful instrument in the history of the world. Like Mozart would have sold everything he owned to have your laptop with whatever software you have on it and a single mic. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, we need to think about studios as, as instruments. And when you think about a studio as an instrument, something magical happens all of a sudden. Well, how would you get better if you wanted to get better at guitar? Well, Maybe you'd get a better guitar. 
you definitely practice more and you definitely get at least a lesson. You'd want to sit down with somebody that was just a badass and have them give you feedback. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, that's, that's like the ultimate way. I mean, I, I, as a yeah. guitar player myself too, the difference between digging around and looking for online videos and actually sitting with somebody and saying, no, put, put your fingers here and this is how you hold the pick and all that kind of stuff yeah. is huge. Yeah. So that's sort of the impetus of, of home studio lessons. I, I love mastering records. I still do it full time. I, I still plan to do it, you know, for at least a decade to come. But there was this sort of conviction when I had this idea of like, oh my gosh, I could help so many more people than I can as just a mastering engineer. And that kind of cool component here was as a mastering engineer and, you know, as a the, the co-host on the Six Figure Home Studio, um, I know all these audio engineers that are trying to find like little side hustles so that they can make more money uh, and have more consistent cash flow and stay in business so that they can make music for a living. Yeah. And it just sort of hit me like, oh my gosh, like all my favorite people on earth would benefit from home studio lessons. Com. Well, I mean, so, it's funny because we talk about that on the podcast. We talk, you know, in the jam session, it's been one of yeah. the questions for a long time is like, you know, how to make a living when you're sort of growing your engineering. Um, and I love that you've created, you keep going, but I love that you've come up yeah. with like the perfect answer for how to do that. Well, yeah. And it's sort of like, you know, today, if you are trying to grow a studio, you're trying to be a professional here, you're going to have a thin month every now and then. And your choices right now are pretty limited. You know, it, it takes a while to get a customer into the studio. It might take months or it might take years. And if you're having a slow month and the rent's due in 10 days, what are you going to do? Like go drive for Uber or Lyft or, you know, rent your house on Airbnb? So the, the impetus behind homestudiolessons.com is no, 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 no. You open up your availability as a teacher on homestudiolessons.com you let your friends know that you're doing this and you try to book a bunch of lessons. And our big thing, um, you know, we're still a startup, we're still brand new, but the absolute end game that we're working on right now is paying teachers same day. So nice. you, bu you book three lessons and then you can cash out just like Uber that day. And so that's sort of my biggest hope is that audio engineers would be able to stay in business by being able to convert their skills into money quickly by teaching people. And the big awesome thing there is you have all these DIY guys that are trying to do home studio stuff on their own. They want to make the record of their dreams, maybe can't afford to work with a professional, but they definitely can afford to take a lesson or two or three or four. And that one-on-one -on -one experience is going to be enough to put them into what I would call hell yeah mode, where suddenly, you know, they're making songs, they're making mixes and they go out and listen in their car. And instead of, you know, crippling self-doubt or soul-crushing shame. It's this moment of, oh gosh, this sounds awesome. I can't wait to show my friends. Yeah. And I'm just so pumped about having something that can help that happen because that's what I want. More, more records on earth, everybody with their own record on earth. That's what, that's the world I want to live in. Um, well, you know, I think about like, you know, having gotten a, a, a professional camera in the past year, or there's new software that I'm learning that accompanies the podcast. And you know, I don't need to go find the the greatest photographer in the world to teach me how to use this new camera. I, what I really yeah. need is I also just need somebody who just knows how to use this camera real well. Yeah. And to have that ability to have somebody who's um, advanced in front of you uh, and can teach you these things is really awesome. And, it, you know, there might even be an advantage to finding somebody who's only so many steps ahead of you because they really understand the same things you're struggling with right now. You're totally right. You're totally right. And, and that's one of the things that's difficult about teaching is if you are a hundred steps ahead of your student, it's really difficult to remember what it was like a hundred steps ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, there is a big opportunity you hit the nail on the head there to find people. And this is what home studio lessons does well is to find the right person, mm -hmm. someone who specializes in your genre and in your software and is in your price range. Dig those, it, yeah. That's yeah. Those are that's sort of the magic three right there, and we can get into that more as, as we kind of dive into this. But yeah, home studio lessons makes that easy to find. So the genre thing I think is really cool. So if you've got a particular style of music that you're really into, um, to be able to find somebody who doesn't just know how to use the software, but knows how to use it to create a, a style of music that that is similar yeah. to what you're going for, I think that can be really helpful too. 
Yeah, I mean, because case in point, if if your best friend is a death metal audio engineer and you're into smooth jazz, like if they're the best death metal audio engineer in the world, that's great. They're they're going to be able to help you a little bit, but ultimately y- you need a smooth jazz guy. And if they're <laughs> Pro Tools and your Logic, ideally a smooth jazz guy who uses Logic. Now, now is there um, death jazz and smooth metal? Do those two genres exist as well? No, but we let's stop this podcast. Let's start those genres. That's the future. <laughs> All right, cool, Smooth man. metal. All right, dig <laughs> it. So we've got um, homestudiolessons.com, Rockstars. You can go check that out. Um, I think that what's so cool about this, just sort of like off the top of my head riffing on it too, is like you've got a place where you can go learn from somebody one-on-one to um, you know, be in your home studio, having somebody sort of reach through your computer screen to help you um, with your existing setup. So it's not like you're watching somebody with something different and you're like, oh, I'm trying to figure out what does that mean to me? You know, you've got somebody yeah. who can help you out specifically with what you've got. Um, and then, you know, if you're a rock stars, if you're somebody who is already uh, at a point where you're ready to teach and you, and you know you've got some knowledge you want to share, this could be a great opportunity for you to connect um, with students. And like Chris says, bring in some side income for your studio Doing something that you love to do, you know, and also, you know, yeah. they, they say one of the best ways to learn is by teaching. Teach, for you sure. Know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I completely agree with that. And that, for me, the Six Figure Home Studio podcast, the best part about recording that has been, you know, we're talking about business for home studio owners and to preach that at people, but also preach it myself is so helpful for me to learn that. And, you know, I've learned and grown so much through being a teacher and it's, it's magical. Yeah, me too, dude. Since I started this podcast now, we're almost, we're closing in on 200 um, episodes. Mm. And, you know, the, I I actually didn't really realize that when I started, that wasn't what I was expecting. The amount of stuff that I've learned as an engineer and a producer in the past few years since I started the show has been massive for me as well, too. I mean, I knew I wanted to help and share and teach mm. um, and just sort of help connect people and help people make their their rec- their best record ever. I just wasn't expecting that I'm beginning to make my best record ever, too. Oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah, so um, very cool, man. Uh, let's see, what are some questions I want to ask you? Um, maybe give a little bit of, like, you know, what should we expect from homestudiolessons.com in terms of what's the experience? You know, you go there for the first time. What should what are people going to see? Yeah, so if you go to homestudiolessons.com, you're going to see a really long list of audio engineers. And on the top, there's filters that you can select, sort of like, you know, Airbnb. And those, there's, those filters, we're always upgrading those and tweaking those. But the main ones are software, genre, and sort by. So software, you know, if you're looking for somebody that specializes in, say, Studio One, you'd go and select Studio One and say you are a hip hop guy, you'd select hip hop. And then the only teachers you're going to see now on your screen are the ones who specialize in both of those things. And you'd click on, you know, one of these audio engineers, and then there's a little calendar on their, on that audio engineer's page with times that they're available. And then you pick a time schedules the lesson. Uh, the system walks you through getting prepared for that. And then the lesson happens over video chat. So you guys are face to face, but you can share your screen and stream your audio. So you can pull up a session and the audio engineer, you know, is able to like take control of your mouse and say, oh, okay, cool. Ah, I see you're using five EQ plugins on your vocal. Let's, uh, let's look at that. All right, let me look at this one. I'm going to bypass that. Let's bypass that. I tell you what, let's start over. Let's just use a single EQ plug and I'm going to show you how I would EQ it because I can hear your mix through my studio monitors and my studio because I'm streaming your output to my studio. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you what, when, when we first brought our first teachers on, I was learning logic. Um, I was, I'm embarrassed to say this, but when I was producing, I was always a digital performer guy. And oh, man. I, I bet on the wrong horse there. The digital performer is not as not, it was really popular like 15 years ago, not so much anymore. But, uh, so I downloaded logic and I had one of my guys give me like a tutorial and it was amazing when he took over my, my screen, I'd recorded the song in logic and he took over and he started like messing with my mix and showing me, well, I do this and I do this and oh, you can use this feature in logic. And it was just this like, like brain exploding to see somebody take over my computer. And 
ultimately, if this comes back to, I got into music because I wanted to record myself. I wanted to record my own songs and I would have done anything when I was 23 years old to have somebody like take over my mix session and say, oh, have you tried, thought about trying this? Oh, have you tried this? Oh, you're not, you know, using this plugin on that track. Wow. Watch what I can do with this. It's built for me Yeah. <laughs> when I first got into audio. That's what I did. And, and the response from people has been, has been that, oh my gosh, this is what I've always wanted. So, well, yeah. well I imagine that also from the experience of a teacher, um, you know, when I've, when somebody just shows me a mix and it's just a two track mix, it's, uh, it feels much more limiting in terms of yep. being able to give feedback and, you know, sort of understand what's going on with the mix and make suggestions yeah. versus the times where I'm like, it's a, it's a session and I could go solo some things, listen to it, go, oh, I see, you know, you could, you could bring the bass up. It sounds good, you know, cause yeah. there's a level of, um, you know, of mixing that is just tactile at the same time. Yes. 100%. Well, and that, that, that I love what you're saying there. It is tactic tactile. And when you have a mix, even if it's just like eight tracks, you know, if you've got four or five plugins on each track, they're buried in each of those plugins can be a little tiny bomb that destroys everything in the right, mix. Right. And you know, when we've worked with people, we'll find that it's like, Oh man, something's definitely off. Hold on. Let me drill down. Oh, uh, you're compressing your kick drum with negative 50 DB of gain reduction <laughs> on this one plugin. Ah, all right. Let's, that's what's going on here. So that sort of ability for someone to dig into what you're doing and find these little gremlins in your mix and walk you through not only how to do it, but why to do it and maybe some alternatives on how to do it differently. It's huge. It's a really big deal to be able to, you know, have that tactile experience where somebody's, where somebody's in your mix. But I, I don't want to have this be just like a commercial for, for homestudiolessons.com. I've got some ideas for you guys on, on how you could simulate homestudiolessons.com for yourselves. Because ultimately, the big thing here is I want to make the world a better place. And the insanity that we feel when, as home studio owners, when we're making our own songs and you go out in the car and press play to listen to your mix and you're like, oh gosh, it's terrible. Or you finish at like 11 p.m. at night on a song and you're like, yes, this is the best song I've ever made. And then you wake up in the morning the next day and press play and just tears of despair stream down your face as you like process. Uh, it's awful. It's the worst song I've ever recorded. I used but last to, night I thought it was the best. Ah! I used to love listening to tears of despair. <laughs> <laughs> they were huge so, yeah. in the 80s, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds like, is that a real band? That's a great no. band name. <laughs> it should be, right? It should be. All right. Yeah, no, I completely understand the uh, despair of listening to the mix. I mean, I still go through it. I, I you know, it's mm. that experience of being in the car and, and listening back and being like, it's almost there, but not this part, you know? Yeah. Oh man. It's soul crushing. It's so intense. Um, and, uh, and again, like, you know, usually the first thought is, uh, what the hell do I need to do to fix this problem that totally. I'm hearing in my mix? Um, and you know, many times I, I've thought like, man, I sure wish I could ask so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even amongst peers, even amongst like equal caliber of mix engineers, just to have somebody be like, what would you do? Like if, if they were able to just magically appear in your studio and sit down in front of your speakers and, and, and say, well, I would, let me, let me copy this session that your, your pro tools, pro tools in, and let me make a couple tweaks that I would make. And then you listen and say, oh, cool. I like how you did that. Oh, int oh okay. Weird. You're using that plugin. Let me experiment with that. So there's just so many opportunities when you're actually in a collaborative environment that you don't get when you're teaching yourself by yourself. And honestly, you know, the whole self-taught revolution that we're seeing right now with YouTube and blog posts and all that stuff, it's the best thing ever, but it has its limitations. And the, the biggest limitation that it has is when you're teaching yourself, you're alone and you're like, I'm just going to teach myself how to mix or how to record or how to produce or whatever it happens to, to be. It comes down to this big issue. And that issue is that you don't know what you don't know. Right. Totally. You know, and that's the killer right there is that you could be 10 out of 10 awesome at nine out of the 10 skills you need to make a great song in your studio, but a one out of 10 on the one thing that you don't even know exists. Right. Exactly. You know, and so the really the only way to figure out what the things that you don't know are is to sit down with somebody that does 
and even if they're, you know, only 10 steps ahead of you, they're only a little bit better, better than you, their ability and their perspective to say, oh, wow, man, you, you don't, you're not using limiters yet. Okay. Let's talk about limiters on your mix. Cause wow, there's some really cool things you can do. Sorry, so but- the drawbacks of teaching yourself, like first and foremost, are you don't know what you don't know. The second drawback is it's really easy to stall out when it's this alone thing, when you're just completely by yourself and you're trying to avoid the, the third issue, which is the crippling self-doubt. You know, you go out to your car and you're like, ah, maybe I should just sell all my mics. Ah, I'm so frustrated. Gosh, I've spent all this money and it's not working out. And I don't know, man, there's just, it's really easy to get in an unhealthy spot that the one-on-one thing, that taking at least a couple one-on-one lessons with somebody can just really change everything. Well, and there's also just the simple, simple fact of accountability. It's like when you mm. do something and you're, you're all by yourself, if you kind of don't feel like pushing a little harder and pushing through on something, it's easy to blow it off. Maybe, you know, not deal with it, but you know, there's yeah. so much power in even having a scheduled lesson coming up. It, it just gives you that kind of incentive to collect your stuff, get it ready, you know, sort of get your mix dialed in be ready to present it, you know, there's a, there's a massive, massive benefit to just scheduling um, an actual face-to-face learning yeah. session with somebody else in anything, but particularly, yeah. you know, in your home studio. Completely. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing I mentioned before, home studios are the most powerful instrument that's ever existed. They are <laughs> also the most complicated instrument that's ever existed. They are you so know? complex, man. You're talking about logic I was flipping through the other day and I discovered some window for like MIDI. It's like a crazy MIDI controlling surface mm. window. And I was just like, just that alone. I was like, man, it would take me, I'd have to dedicate weeks to just paying it, you know, learning how to <laughs> use just this element of it. So yeah. it's like, you're right. I mean, there's there's massive deep layers and levels of complexity in all these tools we're using, each DAW, whatever it is. Well, and the big thing there is the curation process, when you're trying to figure out, well, what do I need to learn to level up? That MIDI window might be awesome for some people, but might be worthless to you. Yeah. And just to have somebody be like, well, I don't think you need this, but your lowest hanging fruit, what would help you the most today is for us to talk about, you know, this feature or that feature or, you know, uh, this. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of op- there's a lot of opportunity there when you're learning from somebody to have them point out the lowest hanging fruit, yeah, and say, it. hey, boy, if you worked on this, your mixes would get twice twice as amazing, pretty much overnight, as opposed to like, hey, if you if you went out and spent you know five thousand dollars on some microphone, it might not move the needle a whole lot. It might not be the lowest hanging fruit. That's, that's good that you brought that up because one of my questions was, should home studios be focusing on buying more gear right now? Is that their problem? No. Ultimately, I would say the biggest lie in the home studio world is this. The lie is it's not what you know, it's what you have. Right. You know, it's this idea that, well, maybe if I just had that one more piece of gear, then I would finally be happy ah, oh, maybe if I just had that one more piece of gear or that plug in or whatever, there is a certain amount of tech that you have to have. I'm not advocating that we all go out and record records with SM57s, you know? Like, you have to have enough good technology, but often it's what you know that's causing the gap in the quality. I, I would say 99% of the time in the artist I've worked with, it's not like, oh, man, well, if only you'd had better converters. You know, that would have helped, but ultimately what would have helped way more was, oh, if only you actually knew how to use a compressor, you know? Like, it's a world of difference. A compressor's so much more useful if you're competent with them than some weird, expensive piece of gear. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it really comes down to, to that, that. That I don't know. Tell me if you agree here. If I look back at my audio career, and I look back at, like, you know, when I had really bad gear or when, you know, when I first started out and my microphone just wasn't that good, I'm struck looking back at, at, you know, old me and old, my old gear at how much better my work would have been then if I knew what I know now, that oh, the yeah. knowledge I have now is like the ultimate differentiator 
between me today and me 10 years ago, not the gear. I'm going to even twist that and say how much better I would be today if I remembered what I knew then. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it's yeah. like that whole like, you know, uh, there's that wonderful element of of naivete and like when you don't know, you you really just kind of trust your creative yeah. expressions and you try things. But uh, no, I'm I'm totally with you and you know, for me when I um started my studio here, the Toy Box Studio, that was a point at which I had to make a shift. I, I went from, you know, browsing eBay every day, looking for sweet deals mm-hmm. on something and coveting vintage pieces of gear to just going, all right, I need to, like, I can't afford to spend any money on stuff. I, I have to support my family. I, I went, you know, that was at the point at which I had my daughter and um, was supporting my family. Um, you know, I, I had to make that shift where it was like, all right, I'm going to take what I've got and I'm just going to use that. No more, no more getting stuff, you know, granted I had, I had plenty of stuff at that point, but, um, it was, it was using the same gear and limiting my gear options and focusing instead on like, okay, how am I going to use this stuff? How can I learn how to make stuff sound great with the things, the tools I already have that I saw a huge shift in my ability in making records. Yeah. Well, it's a huge thing. I think one of the reasons that people, Maybe this is a rabbit hole we shouldn't go down, but let's go for it. You know, you look back at records from like the 60s. It's one of my favorite periods in music. You know, you look at like some of the Motown stuff or Beatles stuff, you know, or even like a little bit after that, you look at like Led Zeppelin or, or whatever. And you have to ask yourself, why were those records so good and seemingly so much better than what we have now when like in many cases, like they had four tracks mm. or they had eight tracks to work with. And like, you know, everybody wants a Poltec or, you know, some crazy piece of esoteric gear that they used to use. But I would imagine like if you build a time machine and went back with, you know, your, your laptop, Pro Tools and an Apollo Twin or something like that, or, you know, whatever, whatever your little portable rig was, that anybody working in one of those old studios, Abbey Road or Hitsville, USA, or whatever, would be like, I'll give you all of this for what you currently have. <laughs> you know, like you have yeah, so much so. flexibility. You can do a thousand tracks on one song, but it comes back to this idea of like, does that make better music? Well, I think that, you know, again, one of the big lessons of of learning how to make great music is just understanding that it's the musicianship, it's the song, it's the production. And those are all things that play into mixing as well and into, you know, even editing Um, and, you know, stuff that naturally somebody who knows the things you don't know yet as a teacher can show you, you know, they're like, you know what, you know, the problem is because you have 50 kick drums happening where there should be three. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and this is sort of real time for me that I'm realizing this, the benefit of the one-on-one is really twofold. They can show you what you don't know and they can also show you what you don't need. Right. You know, like that's huge. I need to write that in my notes for later. That needs to be like stock, a stock like line from studio lessons. But yeah, that, that would definitely be my experience with working with um, the DIY kind of home studio crowd is that often they're using more than they should. Yeah. You know, I, ma- I made a joke about the five EQ plugins, you know, that they use on their vocal and their vocals don't sound right. That's pulled from my experience. I yeah. can't tell you how many times, you know, I've been working with a musician and been like, oh, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're being way too aggressive with your EQ or you're being way too aggressive with your compressor or you're using three compressors on your vocals and none of them are set right. Yeah, like that train is way off the tracks. Let's pull back. Let's take a more minimalist approach. Let's focus on making mentally healthy decisions by being simple. And the quality is just, you know, goes up from there. That's awesome. Well, hey, let's take a quick break. And um, Rockstars, you can find uh, stuff we're talking about and links to uh, homestudiolessons.com in the show notes. So click through there. And um, we may also have a YouTube playlist for you if we got any clips from you, Chris, that we want to include. But um, uh, we'll see you in just a minute for the jam session where we'll come come back in. We're going to dig in deeper into um, more of the lessons that you've learned from teaching one-on-one online at homestudiolessons.com and just at chrisgreenmastering.com, which is really where you, that's where you learned all this stuff about one-on-one teaching, right? Yeah, yeah. Homestudiolessons.com is an evolution of everything I've learned as a mastering engineer. Awesome. All right, rock stars, we'll see you in just a minute for the jam session. Mm-hmm. 
You've already invested in your studio speakers, headphones, and treatment of the room. And you're passionate about creating great music, but your mixes don't seem to translate to the rest of the world. The reason is that your speakers and headphones are not telling you the whole story. The frequency response of your studio has huge peaks and valleys all throughout the low end that are completely screwing up your perspective. You may be doing your best to hit the bullseye with your mix, but your room makes the target of a perfect mix impossible to find. Wouldn't it feel great if there was a simple tool that could fix all that for you and help you get your mixes right the first time? Introducing Sonarworks Reference 4, the affordable solution to correcting your speakers and headphones in your studio. Built for Windows and Mac, Sonarworks helps you position your speakers, correct your control room imperfections, and get a million dollar sound on a home studio budget. Get a 21 day free trial at sonarworks.com and start your journey toward the perfect mix. Are you using a Mac in your recording studio? Are you tired of feeling like the studio setup you worked so hard to create is becoming obsolete too quickly? Wouldn't it feel great to have a trusted friend to help you keep your existing Mac and studio setup current and relevant so that you can focus on the thing you love most, which is making great music? Well, now you can rely on OWC, Other World Computing, which you can find at OWC.com, whose mission it is to help you get the most mileage out of your existing Mac. Whether you need to upgrade your RAM, install an SSD drive, add more connectivity, or simply find a great used Mac that's ready to rock, OWC will help take your studio into the future with a vast library of DIY install videos, 24-7 friendly support, and free shipping in the U.S. on most items over $49. Why get frustrated and ditch your existing computer when you can take your studio into the future with OWC? Learn more at OWC.com and find out how awesome your Mac can be at OWC. Hey, rock stars, we're back now for the jam session. My guest today is Chris Graham, joining us from his mastering studio in Ohio, um, where you make all kinds of great records at chrisgrahammastering.com. Um, but we're also talking, as you know, about homestudiolessons.com. We're just talking about you know, the value and the power of one-on-one -on -one teaching in mm. your home studio to sort of take you to the, that next level, to learn the things that you didn't know you didn't know and the power of that. And um, Chris is going to jump in and teach us, uh, basically, he's just going to give us some tips on how we might be able to just sort of do this ourselves as well. Yeah, totally. So my advice to anyone would be first and foremost, the take home I want you guys to have that, that you'll remember when the episode's over is that your home studio is an instrument. Say that one more time. Your home studio is an instrument. Your home studio is an instrument. Oh, your I didn't say it very well. Instrument. Your home <laughs> studio is an instrument. I have to over enunciate. Yeah, it's a tough word to say, instrument. But, so here's the idea. If it's an instrument, you should treat it like an instrument, which means taking lessons. If you want to get better, the easiest thing to do is, is to do the same thing people have been doing for well over a thousand years when they want to get better at an instrument, and that's a private lesson, private one-on-one -on -one thing. And the beauty of, of something like homestudiolessons.com and really the internet is that suddenly you can do these things remotely. You know, like Lidge, I count you as like one of my favorite people on earth, but we haven't spent a whole lot of like, like time together where I could touch you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I only, I, we saw each other face to face once. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, so last at summer Nam, right? At summer Nam. Yeah. And for like five minutes. Yeah. But our, <laughs> the exact, yeah. But our like rich relationship is a result of Skype. Right. Of Zoom, exactly. You know, of, exactly. of these video chat things. So that's the big thing if, where am I trying to go with this? The reason it's hard to find a mentor and just hop in here is to, to find someone that can teach you one-on-one, -on -one, which that's, that's the important thing. Treat your home studio like an instrument, take lessons. Well, again, it so, falls into the category of you don't know what you don't know. You also don't know yeah. who you don't know. This is true. This is true. And so you might have someone local. And obviously that this is the easiest thing you could possibly do is if you can find somebody that's in your geography, that's local to you, that has the talent, and the talent has three components. They use your software, they specialize in your genre, 
and they have decent social skills. Like you'd actually want to spend time with them. And for audio engineers, that third one can be a challenge sometimes. Right. Not everyone is as uh, as as friendly and engaging as and as as warm as as Lid Shaw. By any stretch of the imagination, nobody Thank is much, for that Chris. matter. You too, man. <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. So it's tough to find someone to teach you one on one locally because they got to have at least four things. They got to be by you. They got to have the right software. They got to have the right genre. They got to have the right social skills. So that's difficult. So here's how I would go about finding a mentor, finding someone to take private lessons from. You have basically four options. You can go local. You can do a summer camp model, which is there are tons of places mixed with the masters is one example. Um, a lot of colleges were on like a two week summer um, program where they'll you know, come in and it's accelerated. There's a place here in Ohio called the, the Recording Workshop. And oh, it's, right, yeah. You know, you know, you go there, it's a couple of weeks, they teach you a bunch of stuff, and then you go home. Now, the summer camp model is great. The third option is school. You could go major in audio, or you could, you know, move to, That's, you that's know, what I did. I, I moved to another part of the country and have lived here for 25 years. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I came so, here to go to MTSU. So, I mean, that was a... That was about the most extreme version of, of uh, yeah, yeah. Of so it was camp. the most ex- extreme version, and it's also probably the least bang for your buck. S- school is way more expensive now than it was yeah. when I was in school or when you were in school. Me too, yeah. And so to to go somewhere and drop seventy five k in student debt, um, yikes! Not the in this case, Dubai gear rock stars. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, seventy five thousand dollars in gear is a way better investment than uh, $75,000 of student debt that yeah. w- won't pay for itself. So th- those are your first three options. And then the fourth is obviously what we're talking about, homestudiolessons.com. You go on there, you find an audio engineer that, that, that knows what you want to learn, that's a perfect match, and that also is in your price range. Well, so, oh, sorry, I was going to s- comment. Um, when you were talking about geography and local, local it, it just I was imagining that, and I was like, okay, if I was a guitar player, I could just go to a show and I'd see somebody playing guitar. I'm like, that's a good guitar player. Yeah. Hey, can I take lessons from you? But if I'm wanting to learn how to use Logic in my stu- home studio, like I don't know where to go to see somebody yeah. using Logic really well, unless you just went to a, a commercial studio and and I don't know if you'd get somebody's time that way or not. Yeah, it's tricky, man. You, you know, it, in a perfect world, we don't need homestudiolessons.com. There's just such a collaborative community where people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll show you how to make awesome music. Like, that's amazing. But ultimately, you know, we have the internet. And why would you limit yourself to one or two local guys who may or may not be the type of person you're looking for when you have the advantage of the whole internet at your fingertips? And with homestudiolessons.com, with a bunch of people that have already been pre-vetted, like that's that's a big deal that you can find someone so much more easily that's probably honestly cheaper than the local guy, as far as, you know, apples to apples, someone of the same talent. Um, because the big thing for my, the engineers that we have teaching on the platform is that they're able to fill the gaps in their schedule by putting availability up for lessons. So for them, it's a huge win to be like, oh man, I had a client cancel on me today uh, for Tuesday afternoon for recording vocals. I'm just going to put some availability up on home studio lessons and see if I can't get some lessons on there. And that way it's, you're not just sitting around playing video games as an audio engineer, you can actually book last minute projects as lessons. And that's Yeah, and huge. and the difference between the kind of virtual time slots and actually face-to-face lessons, you know, if if you're doing it locally and you want to teach somebody where you're like, how much how much do I need to charge? I got to drive all the way across town. It's like an extra hour yeah. in traffic and stuff like that. So this virtual aspect of it is super cool, man. Yeah, it removes all the liability from the audio engineer standpoint of like I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to have somebody in my studio. I don't have to like go back and forth about timing. I don't have to deal with payments. Everything is taken care of for me. And, you know, honestly, like, like we've had a lot of audio engineers ask us like, Hey, if I'm going on vacation, would it be okay if I did a lesson like on the beach? Like, like I'll bring some headphones. And my answer has been like, yeah, totally go for it. And the big, the big thing there is like, dude, if I so like Bob Ludwig, it's like the most famous mastering engineer in the world. If I had a chance to have like a FaceTime conversation with him and show him what I'm working on and get his feedback while he sits on a beach 
with like, I don't care, Apple AirPod headphones? Yes, absolutely. I would love to get his feedback because the nuggets of wisdom he's gonna, that he is going to drop on me are going to be mind-blowing. And so he just, you can't underestimate the power of a one-on-one conversation when you can show someone what you're working on and get real-time feedback, ideally from there, with them in their studio. But even, you know, if, if they're amazing enough, I, it doesn't even matter. Like five minutes with Elon Musk, can you imagine <laughs> what it would be like to just like have that guy for five minutes? And our, our lessons are a lot longer than that. But to be able to ask someone like that or, you know, yeah. Warren Buffett or, you know, Steve Jobs back in the day, you know, there's just so much opportunity right, right. to ask those questions, get an answer, and then more importantly, ask the follow-up question to get to that aha moment, that really deep sage wisdom. Um, all right. So now I know in when I've sometimes messed around with um, online streaming or, or like, you know, setting, sending the audio over, I've, I've found that it can get quite complicated sometimes. Can. Um, what, what do you want to say about that? I mean, um, yeah. Do you have anything to say about just sort of like the logistics of doing this stuff? I mean, in fact, I just got a, had a complicated email exchange with a friend of mine out in LA who was wanting to set up this stuff. And he was like, I can't believe how hard this is. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So that's one of the things that makes Home Studio Lessons such a great platform for this is because what I've learned as a mastering engineer is that I cannot master enough records without great systems. So I've had to become a systems guru. So the way Home Studio Lessons is set up is there are all these like little landmines when you're taking a lesson that technology could derail. And it might be like, oh, Cubase 9.5 doesn't work well with uh, Windows and screen sharing. Or, oh, um, if you're using Pro Tools versus Logic, you have to boot up your audio driver in a different you know, sequence. So what HomeStudioLessons.com does is when the student selects the DAW they're using, that it walks them through the really specific steps to get the lesson going so that in a perfect world, you show up for your lesson, the technology works excellently from minute one and you can immediately dive into the good stuff yeah and it's not like oh try muting that channel and right. oh try selecting that as your audio interface so there's just so many different ways to go about doing an online lesson that you can spend the whole lesson goofing around trying to figure it out and the my goal is to have these systems well i mean they're really great now but we're mm-hmm. constantly improving them especially as like you know cubase 10 just dropped so, you know, we had to update our systems to integrate more completely with Cubase 10. So our systems take all the all the complicated stuff out. You don't have to worry about, oh, have I haven't been paid for this lesson yet? Or, um, uh, oh, shoot, what was the time I was supposed to show up at? Well, conveniently, you got a reminder from homestudiolessons.com. Like, there are all kinds of tech things that we're doing that just makes it effortless, that you just show up, learn cool stuff, and move on with your life, and then make awesome music as a result. Yeah, it's no different than uh, being prepared for a recording session or a mix or even mastering. Yeah. It's like you don't want to waste all your time doing the setup. You want to jump right in and make the music. And same thing with a one-on-one lesson. Yeah, well, and there's sort of a parallel with Uber and Lyft and Airbnb and all these you know, gig economy websites. Could you rent your house to strangers if you wanted to by yourself? Yes, but it's so much easier to do it through Airbnb. Could you... Uh, find someone to drive you somewhere, like say your car's in the shop and you need someone to drive you back and forth. Could you find a stranger that you could pay to do that? Yes, but it would be much easier to use Uber or Lyft. That's what Home Studio Lessons is. It's the absolute easiest way to learn one-on-one from another audio engineer. And what I one of the things I love too is because I've I've seen um, other sites on the internet where they're sort of like general lessons and teaching and stuff like that. but there, you know, there's lots of business coaching kind of seems like yeah. that's a common theme there or like, you know, online stuff uh, using websites. But again, we have a really unique um, and distinct set of challenges for what we want to do because we want stuff to sound great. Yeah. Most of the rest of the world could give two shits about whether it sounds great or not, which is why like, you know, when you go do a, a Google Hangout or like a FaceTime call, the audio is just like it's it's designed just for the voice to carry through. Yeah, and and so you know you've created a system. I, I love that you have focused on making it so that 
you can make sure that you get that experience of, you know, the, the, um, sort of, um, interaction, uh, without any obstacles and that the sound comes across in such a way that, you know, you really, you know, we have like acute hearing, you know, we're, we're really yeah. paying attention to how that audio comes across. So that's very cool. And, and again, rock stars, that's a big part of, I think what, what gets me really excited about homestudiolessons.com is you don't have to go there and sort through whether or not, um, you know, somebody's going to teach you how to code a website or, you know, um, grow an email list. You can just go straight to making music and, and find exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's my hope is that, you know, we've got, uh, 35 engineers that I've approved right now. We've got a whole lot more that I'm in the process of approving. I think like two times more than that. Um, we're always getting new applicants. We're always interested in new applicants um, for people to teach. Great. And the ultimate dream there is that for the people teaching, that this puts them in a position to make a living from music in, in a better way, but also in a more sure way. I've got so many friends that are mix engineers or producers or whatever, that they get in a position where they're like, oh, shoot, my big client fell through for the month. Oh, gosh, how am I going to pay my mortgage this year or this month? And with a service like this where you could automatically, not automatically, but really easily turn your time and your skill into money. Yeah. You know, where, where you can immediately say, okay, cool. Like I can, I'm going to teach these guys how to make more awesome songs, build relationships with them and get paid right away. And move on with my life. And oh, thanks, homestudiolessons.com. I was able to pay my mortgage and I didn't have to go out and get a job. Sweet. <laughs> nice. That's great. I can keep making records for a living. That's great. Let's keep it all in house. You know what I mean? Let's keep it yeah. all in the family. Um, you know, it reminds me of uh, my brother has a music school in, in New York and he's been teaching for decades. And he mm. has former students, you know, that started as early as middle school and high school um, that are grown and now teaching in his oh, school. And I love the full circle aspect of that. You know, this idea that, you know, we're all students at one point, and then at some point we've got the experience and the knowledge to, to share back and, and give back and teach. And so I think it's a perfect fit for you rock stars too. If you think about the fact that, you know, if you're, if you're planning to be doing this for a while, you might be, uh, this might be a great place for you to learn the skills for making great records. And then, when you've, when you've got the knowledge, be able to actually teach it back too. So it's a really nice full circle concept. Yeah. We haven't had that happen yet where someone's taken lessons and then become a teacher, but man, that is going to be like a, an official homestudiolessons.com holiday. The first person it's like, all right, wow, he's, he's teaching now. He's amazing. And man, I, I will tell you a quick story. So we've been really surprised at the number of lessons that people take. They just keep coming back again for more and for more and for more. And there's one guy in particular who's taken, I think, 12 lessons. And I've, he's been a mastering client for probably two or three years. And he sent me a song the other day to master. And, you know, he's 12 lessons in on homestudiolessons.com. And I went back and listened. I probably mastered 20 songs for this guy. And I went back and listened to the first song I mastered for him because I keep all my – I archive everything. So I've got everything available to me so I can reference older songs when I'm mastering newer songs for an artist. And I went back and listened to like his first song and his second song and his third song. And it was like, oh my gosh, these don't sound great. But his latest song is freaking amazing. He sounds like a professional. And it's amazing to watch that transition to see someone go from like, ah, oh, man, they're trying to express themselves in their home studio. They're trying to make something that they can feel proud of showing their friends. Hey, check out this awesome song I made. And to get their friends to, you know, have an emotional reaction to their music and to see them as they really are. Because there's something about you can communicate who you are as an, an individual through music in a way that you can't through any other, any other means, you know, speaking or whatever. So seeing someone go from having a pretty hard time with that to, whoa, this is impressive. Like this person should be very proud to show their friends and to, you know, show off the songs that they're making. That's awesome, man. Well, so um, I thought we would maybe jump into a little bit more of, you know, questions around the types of lessons that you find you you, you keep teaching whenever mm. you do this. Um, are, do you want to give us some different examples of like, what are some, what are some lessons that get taught repeatedly? 
Yeah, well, the I would say probably the most important lesson is, first of all, not going nuts with EQ. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we get people that they come from a live sound background. They're used to doing sound for their band at a bar. And in a situation like that, you're usually pretty aggressive. Yeah, you, you kind of have to be, don't you? Yeah, you're trying to EQ everything in a way where there's no feedback and you're, you're making really aggressive moves with EQ. In the studio, it's very rarely necessary to make a really aggressive move. And often what happens is they make a lot of really aggressive moves and suddenly the song spins out of control. You know, the mix was good for a minute and then you start, you kept tweaking it and all of a sudden it's a train wreck. Mm -hmm. So teaching people to not go nuts, teaching people to be minimalists with their EQ. And what I like to say is if your EQ, you know, one of these paragraphic things that everyone uses, if your EQ was a, was a ski hill, you should be able to ski down it without dying. (laughs) And for many people, it's like you just try to ski down that and you would like get stuck in a crevasse like 20 feet in. And, you know, die of whatever, of, of you know, the bottom of this. Thermia. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's probably the first lesson. The second lesson that's probably the, that we do the most is compression as a whole. Compression, and I'm a mastering engineer, so it's, like, my favorite thing ever. But compression done right is an amazing tool. And when you listen to a song on the, rec- on a ra- on the radio or Spotify or whatever, a song that's been really successful, inevitably – compression was used extremely strategically to make the record feel glued together, to make things punch, to make things pop, and to make it so that the record um, is smooth. Yeah. And so walking people through compression, compression, EQ is sort of like what you see is what you get, basically. And it's just a matter of like not going too crazy on it. Compression is, is a whole nother, you know, mess of, mess of stuff where if, if you do the wrong thing, it, it will train wreck the mix right away. And same with mastering. Yeah. And so those are the two kind of main things of figuring out how to use those together. And the third sort of main lesson that we typically do, and I think, you know, many of you that have tried, that are trying to mix your own records and struggling with this, will, will, this will resonate with you, is that finding a mix that's magical, it's like this weird balancing act. It's like all of a sudden you're working, you're working, you're working, and then all of a sudden, whoa, there it is. There's the magic moment. And you can tell because goosebumps pop up on your left arm, your left forearm. <laughs> and so teaching how to, how to create that glue is, is very much this thing of I'm going to adjust the vocal a little bit. Oh, now I'm going to adjust the guitar a little bit to match that. Oh, now I need to adjust the overheads and the drums. There's a lot of back and forth during that last 10% of finishing the song. And it's huge. You yeah. have to get that 10% right. You have to be, you said it before, tactile with it and experiment. There's no like, well, if you just use all these presets, you know, use your bass preset and use your vocal preset. And that doesn't work. That doesn't glue a song together. Bring back 3K minus 2.7 dB with a Q of. Yeah, yeah. There's no like, you can't download like a preset that's like, oh, this is the vocal preset and it will make your vocal sound good. It's not, it's not that easy. Yeah. It's so much more complicated because I love this. What makes great art great is it being singular. A really, really good song is the only song like it in the world. You look at like Blackbird, great song. What does Blackbird sound like? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sounds like Blackbird before or after. It's singular. And when you're trying to make singular pieces of art, you need to use tools in the right way in a context that works together, not just take, you know, random advice and process it in the same way that everybody else is processing their songs. The real meat, the real gold, the real like the real treasure when you're working on a song like that is figuring out what does this song want? Yeah, indeed. Not Yeah, not what's the standard industry practice to do. And sometimes, you know, like you said, with the tactile concept, it's the process of trying a little of this, pushing it around, nudging it. It's like a molding clay in a sculpture is the only way you f- discover what the right answers yeah. are. You know, So having that ability, having somebody be able to um, work with you through that too. I was also thinking about, you know, I, I have interns in the studio that I, that I teach, and sometimes I joke with them about the fact that really they're just um, 
I, and, and like, I've always made it a process to always just feed them when they're there. So like mm. they'll come over, they might not be doing anything really critically helpful to me. In fact, it might even slow me down during my process <laughs> during the day, but I still take them to lunch and we eat lunch together and everything. And sometimes I joke that really I'm just, they're just my paid friends. So I don't have to be lonely in the <laughs> studio, you know? <laughs> and I, I think that that's another like, you know, beautiful feature of having a one-on-one -on -one coaching session like that. I mean, it's like, if I'm doing the home studio thing, I've got a Saturday, I've got a couple hours to hit the studio. I can go in there by myself and, you know, do some stuff. Um, but it can be super fun to go in and know that I'm like hanging out with somebody for an hour, yeah, dude. you know, and, and really like digging deep and it's, you know, cause we go to the studio and we make music cause it's fun. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing that breaks my heart the most about this home studio, uh, as Graham Cochran says, as this, this recording revolution is that everyone's making their own records, but everyone is also beating the living crap out of themselves to make these records. And, you know, when I, I've seen this a million times in, in the, at the mastering stage, because people are almost done, you know, when they, when they get to me to master their record and the amount of self-deprecation, the amount of like self-loathing, the, the, the imposter syndrome is, is something we talk about a lot. Those would be great names for plugins, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the imposter syndrome, VST. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, when people get to this spot where they're beating the crap out of themselves and they feel awful about themselves and they're, fill, they're filled with like this, am I good? Do people like me? Ah! Like that moment, I feel that because I've been there, man. Like, and to have somebody there with you to walk you off that ledge, to talk you down, like, dude, stop it. Like the point of this is to have fun like, he, here's what's freaking you out. You've gotten too aggressive here or, you know, you need to turn that auto tune plugin down or off or you need to stop using five plugins that are all EQ, that are all really aggressive for your vocal and you need to pull back and let's approach this and try to make it fun again. Yeah. Or you need to just mute that part. Like your mix sounded great until you added, you tried to blend in that 17th overdub track. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, if I had to say like what my biggest goal with home studio lessons is, is that the people that are teaching lessons would be able to help the people learning how to record themselves, learning how to mix, learning how to produce, learning how to edit, that it would make it fun for them. That they would be able to be like, yes, I finished a new song as opposed to this like, I finished a new song and I don't know if I'm going to show anybody. You know, like this, this moment of like, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm making fun of like myself there. Like this is a real thing. And I don't know why it's the nature of the beast. Like this self doubt, the second guessing, it's tough, but it's certainly, I would say the biggest contributing factor to that, if it's something you're struggling with is loneliness. It's the lone wolf. I'll do this by myself until I show everybody I know. Like that's a terrifying thing. Of course, I'm going to spend hundreds of hours making a piece of art never ever getting feedback from anyone that's good at making this type of art. And then I'm going to show every single person on earth. Yeah. You know, that's, of course it's stressful. So you, you have to insert people to get feedback from somewhere in there who can, who can teach you, oh, well, have you thought about this? Or mm, I don't know if I like uh, the extended 17 minute solo outro bridge, right. you know, on the, <laughs> Yeah, that's a safe place to do that. Yeah, so now I'm going to uh, insert a suggestion in the suggestion box right now. Do it. I would. I think I would love to see um, like a, a showcase room or like you know a bulletin board, like a playlist kind of thing, where all uh, all your students at home studio lessons as they're working on stuff. You know, it's meant to be sort of within the community or not, or it's meant to be more public than that when the when songs are really you know kind of polished and finished. But you know, help people have that place to go and post and share. I think that'd be super cool. Well, know? that's a, that is definitely a dream of mine to have a, a Facebook group or something like that, yeah. where it's, it's people that are all doing the same stuff. And man, that would be really, really, really cool because, you know, it, it is the community aspect that makes this fun. And man, I just, I want this, I want this for like the world lidge. Like I want to see, to see home studio owners making more songs making more records, more people building home studios or buying home studios or however you want to look at that to the point where in my perfect world, 
every single person has their own record. And, you know, to this might be too cheesy, but where we're all recording studio rock stars. Indeed. Where we're all like, yeah, man, I made this record and I love it. And it ex- I was able to express myself in a, a more clear way than I ever have. Or I was able to process something that happened to me, a breakup or a death or whatever. A home studio is like the best place to process life. And when life overflows, music happens. Yeah. And that's great, but this sort of like misery that so many home studio owners go through in that process is not great. And there has to be a better way for us to do that. And I think homestudiolessons.com is at least a piece of that answer. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And then um, in the meantime, also Rockstar is a reminder that um, speaking of Facebook groups, if you want to go share your music and sort of begin to have a little bit of uh, back and forth and collaboration and safe place, until the home studio's Facebook group is ready, um, go to rsrockstars.com slash FB, and that'll take you directly to our Facebook group, which you can just, um, uh, su- you know, submit, and then I'll, then I'll add you to it. And it's a, a place now you can go share your music, get some feedback too. Because I, 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 I agree, man. I totally want to see the same thing. I want us to all feel like there's a cool place to go to where you can just, you know, let it all hang out and, <laughs> with friends, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, also, I was going to say, um, do you think, do you see sort of like a vision in the future? Maybe at some point, is it people teaching instruments and lessons as well? It's like, what if, what if, you know, if you got somebody who's like, man, I'm, I, I really know how to capture myself with drums and bass and guitar in the home studio. Maybe that's something that could be helpful for people as well. We've definitely thought about that of having like more specialized, uh, having a skill section of like, hey, if you're struggling with drums. We've got a drum guy that's yeah. like logic rock drums. Um, we're going to wait to roll that out until we've got things. Um, I don't want to complicate it too much. It's yeah, my hesitation. Totally, totally. And I, I don't want there to be like 17 different drop downs you can select to filter. But at some point, that's probably an, an inevitability. Yeah. So uh, case in point right now, um, I've started teaching lessons on homestudiolessons.com. Awesome. I teach mastering. I don't do anything but mastering. So, um, you know, if you want to take a mastering lesson with me, homestudiolessons.com slash Chris and C-H-R-I-S. And so I'm I'm sort of like experimenting myself with this skill-based section of home studio lessons of can we, can you say I need help with mastering or I need help with uh, vocals or I need help with um, drum editing. You know, all these like little freaking nuancey pockets of home studio ownership of like where it can be difficult to release something that's decent unless you've mastered one of these small skills. But all the teachers that we have right now um, are all really curated and they're all awesome. Um, At some point, I'll probably open it up to just anybody that wants to teach on homestudiolessons.com. And at that point, there'll be a lot of room for specialization. But until then, um, yeah, it's definitely something we're thinking about. Super cool. Well, um, is there anything that we haven't really covered that you wanted to, to uh, talk about before we kind of wrap up? Yeah, for sure. I would say first and foremost, let me talk to people that are professionals, people that are trying to do this for a living and they're feeling the burn uh, of having a thin month every that, now and then. That's you, rock stars. <laughs> if that's you and you want to get um, some extra side hustle cash and teach on homestudiolessons.com, check out homestudiolessons.com slash apply. We are still accepting ap- applicants. Um, we're, we have a, had a lot, um, but we're definitely looking for people, especially um, I think the main DAW, the main two DAWs that we're struggling with um, is we're looking for Fruity Loops people, the FL Studio guys, and Nixcraft. We want to make sure that we've got every DAW covered that any student could come in and be like, ah, this is what I use. And they can find someone that specializes in that. So those two DAWs in particular, um, we need help with. So if that's you and you want to teach lessons, please apply. Um, if you specialize in logic, you know, whatever, please apply. If you're interested in this, we are definitely still considering new applicants. We're, and what we're, about there's, Pro Tools is there as well? Yeah. Uh, literally, uh, I think every doll you can think of with the exception of like one or two are Maybe, listed on there. Can we, can we skip Audacity? <laughs> oh, Audacity has been skipped. We we shall not be doing Audacity lessons. Rockstars, if you're using Audacity to make records, switch. Yes, now. Uh, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the, the butt one day, but I had trouble <laughs> figuring out how to make any music on that. 
I don't think they make any money, so they they uh, they can't sponsor the show. Take <laughs> it. Um, let's see. Uh, that's awesome, man. I think that's super exciting. Um, you know, just just how cool and what a great fit for this show, particularly that there's a place where you can go if you either want to learn stuff or if you're ready to start teaching stuff um, for the the studio, the home studio. And I, you know, I know it's home studio lessons, but I'm pretty confident that this extends to you know deeper levels of of studios. Whether you're already doing this for a living or yeah. trying to like learn how to do it as a, a commercial studio as well. Um, well, yeah. Go ahead. For sure. And th- that is something that we are exploring um, as far as adding teachers in that are top tier. Um, we're definitely having conversations with people where we're trying to, you know, in a perfect world, it's like, oh, you, you want to get uh, you're really good at this already. You're a great mix engineer, but you want to get a private lesson from somebody with five Grammys. This is the place where that would happen. So yeah. we're exploring that right now. Um, we're adding new teachers every week. Well, dude, and- you're teaching on there. It's already top tier. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Trying to. Yeah. Um, cool, man. Well, let's see. Uh, let the rock stars know uh, anything else about where they should go to learn more about all this and follow you online. Yeah. Homestudiolessons.com um, would be the place to check this out. Um, if you want to connect with me personally, um, I'm I'm trying to get into Instagram. So Chris underscore Graham is my Instagram account. And then uh, the mastering website, chrisgrammastering.com, G-R-A-H-A-M, um, is a great place to connect as well, especially if you're you know, in the market for a mastering engineer. That's you know, one of the best first places to start outsourcing because mastering is so complicated and so difficult. Yeah, dig it. And then I think you still offer some pretty sweet incentives uh, at Chris Graham Mastering where you can get a a free mastering sample and, um, yeah, and yeah. mix coaching or something like that or a mix review? Yeah, so um, the big thing that we do with Chris Graham Mastering is I do f- a, one song as a free sample. So I'll send you back a portion of that song, let you hear what it sounds like. Um, definitely, if that's something you guys are thinking about, you're trying to master yourselves, either go take lessons or have a mastering contest. Send the one song out to a couple guys, get a, a sample back and compare and see which one did the best job. And not only that, see which one like emailed you back quickly, uh, was friendly <laughs> and uncondescending, you know, and obviously the price thing is a component there too. So if you want to get a free mastering sample, just go to chrisgrammastering.com. And then if you end up booking me, uh, we include a free mix evaluation before mastering as well. Dig it. Well, uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us again on Recording Studio Rockstars. Dude, a blast to hang out with you. I feel yeah. like we, we, we did a nice condensed podcast episode too, which is great. We need more of those here at Recording <laughs> Studio Rockstars. I hear you, man. Um, and then um, I, I look forward to seeing you um, hopefully at Winter Nam. Yeah, man. Sure. Well, yeah, legit, I love you, dude. I, I, I'm going to – let me let me just like kind of gush on you for a little bit here. When you invited me on your show the first time, uh, it was a – it was a transitional moment for me. And then when you invited me to your mastermind group and I started to meet, you know, all your friends and they became my friends, like, I just can't thank you enough. Like I have grown so much as a result of, well, there's this book, there's this book called The Go-Giver. And it's this amazing book that talks about uh, sort of like business karma, but there's, there's this idea in the business that, that there are different individuals that facilitate community. And there's a guy in the book called The Connector. And you exemplify that guy more right than on. anybody else I've ever met in my entire life. You you take cool people and introduce them to each other and build chemistry and build a community. And I just, I can't imagine what my life would have looked like today if we hadn't met, what was it, maybe two years ago? Yeah, I think it was a couple of years ago. And um, Rockstars, I was actually, I think I was like trying to, search on YouTube for a video about, you know, how to use some plugin or other and up pops this, you know, brief commercial beforehand. And it's Chris's lovely face, um, talking about, you know, if you're mastering your own record and, you know, you're struggling with it, you know, you might want to come check, check out his site and I listen to some before and after examples. Um, and I was, I just thought that was super cool. (laughs) And I love the fact that you just appeared and like, you know, deliver just the right message on YouTube as I was going through a particular struggle. And so, uh, so I reached out to you and I was like, yeah, man, Chris, you should come on the show, man. Let's talk about all that. It's crazy. Power yeah. of YouTube, man. Power it's, of YouTube. Power of the internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, power of one-on-one face-to-face. Yeah, man, for sure. I'll, I'll never forget um, what there was a time when I, you know, I've had 
tens of thousands of people sign up on my website to get a free mastering sample over the past decade or so. And I remember being in that mastermind group with you guys and confessing that like, I don't ever email any of these people. Like I don't try to add value or like teach them anything. And you guys just like smacking me through the computer across the face. And like, I really started to lean in to try to be more helpful um, to more people in the way that, that you are, you know, that with your podcast, you're helping thousands of people every week in a way that really impacts their lives. And being a part of that mastermind with you really just sort of blew my mind of like, wow, I need to help more people. That's, that's where the good stuff is. So man, I, I appreciate it. I love the freaking crap out of you. And I, I can't wait, wait to see you again and, and, uh, and tug on your beard. <laughs> in, you know, in real got, life. I'm doing a pu- public confession right here. I may shave it before then. Rockstars, I may oh shave my. the beard pretty soon. I'm not so sure. I, I've, it's been like almost five years and okay. I'm at a point now where I'm like, I'm ready for another, I'm ready to, to my, for my face to be reborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wish I had a beard, but I am uh, too fidgety of a person. I cannot deal with facial hair. That's why I shave everything north of my neck. So yeah, nice, shaved dude. head, shaved face. I you just, didn't shave I your eyebrows yet, though. I, well, that's true. I don't shave my eyebrows. But you could, man. I think Marilyn Manson did it for a minute, and so did you know David Bowie. Maybe that'll be like my brand. You know, purple <laughs> shirts, glasses, shaved eyebrows. Yeah, there you go. Homestudiolessons.com. <laughs> All right, dude. Great to see you, man. Great hanging with you. Um, Rockstar, as a reminder, you'll find links to what we're talking about in the show notes. You can just click through homestudiolessons.com right there. And... Um, Dude, I can't wait to see how this turns out. I think it's going to be awesome. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. All right, dude. We'll talk soon, man. Cheers. See ya. Thanks so much for listening to Recording Studio Rockstars. If you enjoyed the show and want to help make it better, please leave a rating and review on iTunes to help reach more people. You can click directly over to iTunes or go to recordingstudiorockstars.com slash review for an easy explanation. And if you want more free content, all you have to do is text RS Rockstars to 33444. Again, that's RS Rockstars to 33444. And I'll keep you in the loop with articles, videos, and podcast updates. And I'll let you know about any upcoming giveaway offers, all totally free. Thanks for listening. I'm Lid Shaw. And this is Recording Studio Rockstars. Now, go make great music. Music